Hi, I'm Mark Lewis. I'm the VP of Application Services at Canonical, in which responsibility I look after all of our ISV and IHV vendors. I'm really excited to be here today with Phoebe from SNEAK, who's going to talk a little bit about what SNEAK do and the overall federal space in which they operate. But I don't want to speak for Phoebe. Over to you, Phoebe. It's lovely to meet you. Um, I lead our U.S. public sector business over at SNEAK, um, which is inclusive of both federal, state and local and education. Can you tell me a little bit more about what SNCC actually does? Like, as a capability, what is it that people look to you to deliver? So what I like to describe SNCC as is the bridge between your development teams and your AppSec teams. Okay. So we look at application security from a, a developer-focused, developer-first mindset. So it's the shift left mentality mm -hmm. where traditional application security, you push out code and then you scan it for vulnerabilities mm -hmm. and then you push that back to the dev team to remediate. So you're slowing down that process. It's a little bit more waterfall, not even agile. It's backwards and forwards. It's backwards it? and forwards, correct. So how do we enable your dev team to be security evangelists? You do that scanning and remediation at that level prior to pushing to production. Fantastic. So this is a, a true developer-centric tool. A true developer-centric tool. And it fits into the hyperscalers. We're here at the AWS DC Summit yep. um, because because it makes sense because people are deploying on Kubernetes platforms here? Kubernetes, um, we do both container scans where I know we partner with you, mm -hmm. um, IAC side of the house as well, infrastructure as code, and then proprietary and open source code scanning. So we have a very broad platform um, and, and the use of it can be uh, dependent on how you're um, doing your development from a team standpoint. I guess that's one of the things you allow uh, that whole government, federal, uh, public sector sector to do is is the app modernization piece, which has been so hard for people to to get their heads around. It is, and then it's even harder because you have these applications that they're critical, right? Look at the FAA. FAA's had a lot of challenges in the mm. past couple of years because you can't just shut that application down. And if you were a commercial company, you would say, "Hey, we're going to just kind of start from scratch." But that's such a mission critical. Uh, yes. a tool, as is most of the applications being developed by our federal agencies today, that you have to figure out how do you modernize them and how do you help stair-step them where they're uh, meeting those modernization and transformational needs, but doing it securely mm -hmm. and then still not impacting the citizen services that they're delivering to the, to the U.S. population. I'm going to pivot a little bit. Uh, an awful lot of AI is delivered as containers. Is that a space where you folks are seeing traction? We focus uh, quite a bit on the AI side in terms of how you're uh, scanning generated AI-generated code um, uh, for your development teams. Um, we actually use a lot of AI in terms of how we go to market with our security posture as well. Mm -hmm. um, in public sector, it's a little bit, I think, more of a thought leadership mindset for us where we're helping them decide how they're going to tackle AI because it's not as simple as flipping on that switch. And I'm sure it's very similar with how you're working with them in the AI space as well. Exactly. There's the whole business of the AI stack, then there's the, the results it generates, and then there's looking at the results it generates, and it, it, it's a kind of somewhat cyclical thing. Absolutely. And unfortunately, the risk posture is so much higher, right? Well, yes. You can't... Yeah, where did that model come from? Yeah. What was the data that went into it? Um, what other what other trends are you seeing in the in the in the market today? Um, I'm seeing. Well, I love the idea that citizen service has become a, a customer service, and when it comes to how those applications are uh, providing citizen services to the American public or to any public from a public sector standpoint, um, I would say that that mind shift to I'm going to operate and act like a commercial organization is critical in order to keep up with the technology today. Um, and it, it's, I would say that most, m most citizens expect that commercialized experience when interacting with their government. And it, it's just leaps and bounds from where I've seen it five years ago. It took me five minutes to get my car inspected in DC the other day, which was absolutely wild. I, um, uh, all done via app, all done via mobile app, all done submitting online. It, 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 I'm floored by the movement that the public sector space has made. It's fantastic to see. I mean, we're seeing um, across the pond, because obviously we, we, we hail from other sides yeah. of the pond, um, in the EU, the Cyber Resilience Act is having a similar impact. The idea that everything really needs to be assured when you're building a product or a service, you, you, you really need to know where it came from and who's, who's on the hook to make sure it makes sense. And so the, the concept of the manufacturer is, is really becoming a key 
key part of how we, we work with the folks like yourselves to ensure that our end customers, joint end customers, actually have capabilities that they can stand behind in an assured way themselves. I, I think that too, that's the biggest piece because again, it's not just modernize, it's not just leverage mm -hmm. modern technology, it's how do you do it securely? Yeah. And that's been a core challenge for a very long time. And it feels like the partnerships that are being established today in support of the public sector space are enabling that to move forward. So one of the things that brought us together was the FedRAMP story that Canonical offers. Can you give me a little insight as to what that meant, how it worked out for you folks? Yeah, absolutely. So our FedRAMP solution is powered by AWS. Um, it is a separate multi-tenant SaaS offering that will be authorized at the moderate level. Um, it is a very big deal when it comes to how we're servicing our public sector customers and enabling them to have a true SaaS-based experience when leveraging Sneak. Um, and uh, we are very excited to partner with you all as well in terms of how we provide that solution to the, to the public sector market. 